Hi, this is Karun Chandok, and you're listening to Speed City. You're listening to Speed City F1 on Sirius XM. Uh, we still got Chris. You know what? Let's just go straight to the interview with that he did with Yost Capito, Williams' principal. Yeah, I've got Yost Capito here with me. Yost, I mean, what a result. I bet when you woke up on Saturday morning and heard you had to make a driver change, you weren't expecting to score points this weekend. Yeah, it wasn't that clear to make a driver change yesterday morning, so we had to wait until he had the results. Alex had the results from the hospital, uh, that it, what it really was. So it came really, really late. So it was after 11 then we had to make the, the choice and then I think that even shows how difficult it really was for Nick. He get it after 11, he was in the Petto Club entertaining guests, had a couple of coffees and then say, okay, come down, get your helmet, get your, get your suit and uh, get in the car. So, but he did an outstanding job, it's if, fantastic. That's what I was going to say, I mean, what were your expectations of him today? Because obviously he started so high in eighth and stayed up there. Yeah, you know, I know him quite for a while and I know his capabilities and it's exactly what I expected, what he's capable to do. That it's not that it's any short of expectations. Yeah? He did an absolute outstanding job, jumping the car, not doing any mistake. And the cars are difficult to drive. It's so tricky and there's so many things on so many switches, everything to learn. And he has never been in the car for long. Yeah, just an FP1 is completely different. There is no pressure. But to remember and do everything right under pressure, is um, it's absolutely fantastic. He is, uh, uh, I think it's not just his understanding getting in a car, it's his race intelligence. So he had to defend, he had to attack, he had to do everything. And that over a two hour race and his first ever race, this is, this is you, I, yeah, I have a huge respect for him. It was very impressive, that is his first racing pit stop, but just finally the question that everyone's now asking, was that an audition for a race seat next year? And if it was, was it an impressive audition from your point of view? Um, but you know, as, as I said, he did what I expected, so I know his capabilities, and I think he just underlined his capabilities. So we'll see what, what his situation is. He has other commitments as well, and it's up for him to, to see what is, what is possible. Of course, I know him for a while now, and we are really good friends as well, so we'll see what, what's happening. Is he on the shortlist, though? He always been on the short list. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much for what done today. Thank you. Thank you. That's Jos Kapita, the, the Williams team principal. Very happy with what Nick DeVries did. Huh. Hey, yeah, Chris, uh, he avoided the question a little bit, but it's interesting to say he, he's such a, a good friend. And, and the other thing is him saying all of that about he knows his expectations, but throwing a driver into an F1 car that, was didn't know he was going to race 30 minutes before i mean that's that's above and beyond i mean that to me that seems uh i mean even if you were a regular driver and did that that's crazy yeah i was really really impressed by the way he handled the whole situation if you think his only real mistake was that uh q2 like rear locking issue that was caused by having a steering wheel he wasn't used to he had albons and he was used to let or he had latifis he was used to albons um he, he kind of said that the way it was set up was slightly different and it caught him out but in the race as well, it was it was as we were coming up to that first pit stop or only pit stop, and I suddenly thought he's not done one of these yet. He's not been testing where he would have got to practice normal pit stops uh, in preseason like any other rookie. So okay, he's done them in Formula Two and and Formula E, but he's not done it in Formula One, and he didn't get to practice it yesterday. He obviously didn't, the closest he would have come to would have been kind of coming to the grid. Um, so to nail that, and the team nailed it too. To be fair to them. That set up the result because it was in such a tight battle. He was right in the middle of a, a group of cars. He couldn't afford for anything to go wrong. Hmm. Yeah, he had to learn the race starts as well, which is a critical part for a Formula One driver with all the complex systems and each team has their own and so forth. Uh, spectacular and job. Very true. And that's something, again, that in an FP1 session, they're not working on, are they? They're never going to give <laughs> a, a rookie who's only doing FP1 sort of wasting time trying to get the clutch bite point right. Then that's just not on the list of to-do list. So, um, yeah, sensational job to get those little details right, which then let him put together the rest of the race. And in such a close fight, easily those could have chipped him up and cost him points. So, yeah, uh, as as Capita said, massive respect for the way that went down. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys.